Another way to make querying more powerful is to put decision making into the query. Let's show you what we mean. So let's create a query in design. And we're just going to use our OSU data like we have. And now we want to use some if then logic. So if something happens, then do this, just like in Excel. So what we're going to look at is say if the transaction date happened in a certain month, then we want to to say it's high risk, and if it did not, then it's low risk. So what we're going to do is say, let's put in the ID for each transaction. We'll go ahead and put in the vendor, the transaction date, uh, and that, that's good enough. So now we want to say, if we look at this, if it happened in uh, 2000, if it happened in the month of, uh, let's just make it up November, then it's high risk. So to do this, let's go to Builder. We're going to call this high risk. We're going to use an if statement. Now, if in Access you have two I's. So we're going to say if, let's open this up, the queries, if the transaction date equals 10 or 11, November. Now what we need to do is the transaction date, we need to say if the month of the transaction date. So we'll use a little bit of that logic we learned in basic math formulas. So if the month of transaction date equals 11, then we want it to return. Notice it says the true part, high risk. And if not, we're going to call it low risk. All the turkey from the month of November can make people's brains go crazy and they can lie. So we're going to simply make this formula high risk, low risk. We click OK. We click View. And notice all of these transactions happened in June, July, so it's low risk. If we can find one, we come down here to see if we can quickly find one that happened in the high risk. Well, an easier way to do that is just go like this, sort it ascending, run it, <clears throat> and sure enough, the ones that happened in November are high risk. So again, there we use this if logic, if whatever criteria we put, which here is month of the transaction date equals 11, value of true, value of false. Very similar to Excel, you just have to think about it in database terms. Now we can make even more complicated queries as well, because you can nest if statements inside of each other. So say for example, we're looking at year and amount. Let's open that up in Builder. What we're going to do is, just for practice, if the amount is greater than 1,000, we're going to say there's a special surcharge. It's going to cost an additional 1%. So to do that, you're going to say if amount is greater than 1,000, take amount and multiply it by 1.01. .01. If it's less, just take amount is what you'll have. <clears throat> All right, so with that, oops, turn off the totals. If I put amount down here, and we'll go ahead and sort descending, and we'll call this surcharge. We'll click run. And you can see the surcharge should be higher. There it is if it's over 1,000. And if we go down to the bottom, they're exactly the same, just like we want. Okay, so now let's say there's a tiered surcharge structure. So let's open up that in Builder. You can say, okay, if it's greater than 1,000, you pay 10%, but if it's greater than 500, you pay half a percent. So what we do is we can think of this if statement. This first one is saying, if it's greater than this, multiply by that. If it's not, we can go to the next one and say, if amount is greater than 500, then the answer should be amount times 1.05. If it's false, we just want an amount. Now, that whole statement is the false statement. So that will only be triggered if it's less than 1,000. And then we come into here, this will only be triggered if it's less than 500. So we can close that. You want to make sure you count your parens carefully. We have two open, so we need two ending ones. 
we can run that. And you'll see that this would be 1% higher. When we come down to greater than 500, right in there, it is half a percent higher. And then we come down to below 500, it's the same amount. So again, nested if statement. Uh, these are easiest to write. I find I just write the statement out. So I might even write this if condition true, false. And then I'll copy and paste whatever the formula is over false and over true so that I can get it written correctly. That's a quick way to stay organized, especially if you're nesting two, three, four, or more if statements. It can get very, very complicated. All right, you can use if statements with totals. So if we go ahead and put totals up here, you can say let's figure out by year the total amount. So we're going to sum the total amount. And over here, what do we want? Do we want a sum or an expression? Well, if we want to add this total amount up, we can click sum. What Access will do is first compute these total amounts and then sum them together. So if I click run, there we have it. And it will have applied the logic appropriately to each of the different ones. You can go back and check that if you'd like. And added the 1% surcharge or the half a percent or no surcharge correctly. Now, just like before, you have to be careful if you have an aggregate expression up here and then try to aggregate again, it won't be able to do that. You would need to do that in two queries or, or something more complex. But if you just have a straight if function, you can use it in an aggregate query.